let me take you all back. Back to a time when life was simple and everything was right with the world. The year is 2020. Wake up champ, you have another long day of ignoring your online classes in favor of watching Twitch streamer Among Us and listening to Hyperpop. You think to yourself, wow, with all this time on my hands, I should really do something productive. Let me assess my options. Oh, surely this will have no consequences whatsoever. Fast forward, a year later, 2021. Thousands of dollars spent lowballing on Grailed. Billions must resell. The game has changed. You can't even recognize yourself anymore. Streetwear is a lost love. Everything is a corporate cash grab. They're selling a feeling. Commodity is fetishized, repackaged, marked up, and sold. But hey, HBO has a new show out now. Look guys, Offset is in it. Oh, remember when you used to care about streetwear? Oh, you wanna watch this? You wanna watch this so bad? Oh, look how hip and cool we are. Oh, this could be you. Fire! The Hype is a streetwear competition show that premiered in the summer of 2021 on HBO Max. The first season, hosted by Complex's own Speedy Mormon, features nine up-and-coming fashion designers who are competing to win $150,000 in the favor of the esteemed judges. These judges, referred to as the co-signers, include celebrity fashion stylist Marnie Senefonte, Beth Burkett Gibbs, who is the co-owner and creative director of Union LA, and, of course, Offset of the Migos. I like that. That's fire. And the drip is so yeah, good. It's fire. Looks Through introducing a new hip and cool idea like this, capitalizing off of the popularity of streetwear, combined with a plethora of celebrity appearances, you would assume that the show would live up to the hype. Yet, that does not appear to be the case. With mixed reviews, some criticism, and low view counts spread across the promotional videos for the series, one may wonder what went wrong. Mid reviews for a mid show? Or was the show too ahead of its time? Being a real fashion enthusiast, I wanted to find out for myself. So I watched every episode of the first season, and now I will drag you all down with me. Through extensive note taking and pondering, I have come up with my own criticisms, strengths, and weaknesses of the show that I will share with you all in due time. Stick with me here as a lot goes on in the first episode, which makes sense as there are a lot of moving parts and things to establish, but I'll do my best to ensure that my summary is cohesive and not overly nuanced. The show commences with a monologue about the convergence of luxury and streetwear, followed by a variety of known tastemakers within the realm of fashion sharing their thoughts on what streetwear really is all about. And this will become an important point of contention throughout the show, and one of the more common criticisms of the show as well. Streetwear is a very broad term, with no real, definitive, straightforward meaning. It changes depending on who you ask. Much like fashion at large, it is, of course, subjective. Not many know this. Anyway, we are introduced to the contestants and explain the format of the show. The contestants will compete in weekly challenges to see who will win and who will be sent home. But of course, there will be the odd twist. Right off the bat, the judges are brought in to take a look at a selection of pieces that the contestants have made in the past, with Offset delivering some pretty in-depth insight already. Okay. These pants is hard. I, I like Stripes be hard though. And, shocker, this is actually the first challenge. This challenge gives us a good look at what the contestants are going for. We can gauge their vibes from their work. I won't lore dump every detail about the contestants in order to avoid making this overly convoluted, but Kai, a designer who immigrated from Vietnam to LA when he was young, ended up winning this challenge, being safe from elimination for this episode. But it's not over yet. The contestants are told that, throughout the competition, the designs that they will create will be compiled in a lookbook, which will serve as a cohesive collection of their vision that will hopefully showcase their progression throughout the show. And with that being said, the real challenge starts now, with the contestants being told that they will be making a look for ASAP Ferg. Ferg explains what he's into, what he likes, but when he asks the contestants if they have any questions, they immediately shut him down by saying no. Do you guys have any questions? No. No? Oh? No questions? No. Mm -hmm. No. They're wasting opportunities. <laughs> which is a little awkward. And with that, the contestants are told how this challenge and basically the rest of the competition will work. Essentially, they have to create a design, but they are provided with seamstresses, graphic artists, and pattern makers, which highlights one of my main concerns that will come up time and time again throughout the show. Each of the contestants are at a different skill level and a different stage in their careers. Some can't even sew, and some constantly ask the others for help and advice. You'll see what I mean as the show goes on, but it doesn't seem fair to the actually talented and skillful designers that 
that someone who can only draw makes it as far as they do in the competition. Like some of the contestants already have established brands, teams, and connections in the industry, yet others make one of one handmade pieces. There's a very big divide is what I'm trying to say. A big discrepancy and craftsmanship between the contestants. But you'll see, trust the process. Anyway, once they finish creating their looks, they will style their models and work with a photographer to get some shots for their lookbooks. And the winner of each weekly challenge will have their looks sold on the very reputable and trustworthy Stock X. With that being said, the challenge finally starts. The contestants have two days and eight hours to create their look. Here, they will face their first hardships. Pieces coming back from the seamstresses that don't fit properly, ideas not working out, and other problems. Everyone is having a good time until one of the contestants, Murph, goes to the other room to answer a call that turns out to be a divorce hearing. Ah, oh, way to kill the vibe. But she toughs it out and gets back to what really matters, streetwear. With time running out, the contestants make some of their last minute fixes and get on to showing off their clothes. And not asking Ferg any questions ultimately was the downfall for many, with the judges agreeing that although the clothes are hard, they aren't really for Ferg. But that aside, Kai wins again, with his look being absolutely fire. That's fire. Mm, all right. That's fire. Huh. Now it's time for the judges to decide who to send home, with Murph, Alan, and Jolison being in the bottom three. Murph's look being too outdated, Alan being too bland, and Jolison being not streetwear enough. They end up sending Jolison home, which I guess makes sense as his work seems to be above streetwear or more traditionally classically trained, featuring more higher fashion-esque designs that aren't rugged and hip enough for the streets. But the drama doesn't end there. The judges announce that Murph will also be getting sent home, which I can't help but wonder if this is as a result of her other stuff going on in her life. Going through a divorce while doing this competition would likely mess up her game, but she admits to creating looks for Cardi B and Beyonce Say, so like I can't really feel that bad. Losing the challenge didn't seem to phase her too much as she is still active in creating to this day. The next episode begins with a twist. A new designer named Wole has brought in, and the contestants are tasked with creating a jacket. But not just any jacket, a jacket that represents their community. So naturally, the blonde white girl from Lexington, Kentucky decides to create a red bandana gang-oriented jacket tribute to YG. Bye that part as this resonates with her personally surely this won't cause any drama whatsoever and i doubt it will be the major talking point throughout the whole episode don't get shot wearing that the focus shifts to camilla who already owns and operates her own brand but this is her first time creating a sample as i mentioned this calls into question the skill level of different designers she has never used a screen printer before yet claims to be about the streetwear life more time passes in the competition, and I'm just now cluing in that I've seen this guy on my Instagram Explore page before. Very cool. But with time wrapping up, the contestants are informed that their photo shoots will be honoring LA, featuring classic cars, and a surprise guest will be present. That guest being Wiz Khalifa. You may have guessed, but Caroline's jacket is a big point of contention for the judges. She tries to defend her reasoning, but she may be a bit disillusioned and unwilling to listen to feedback. Meanwhile, the rest of the contestants present their work, and it's time for the judges to make a decision. Alan and Caroline are called to talk with the judges, with Alan's jacket appearing very lackluster, being met with similar criticism that he received in the previous episode. And I'm sure you can guess why Caroline was called to talk with them as well. And I think it's almost like a universal pattern because it means so many different things to so many different people. Like, did you just Google this? Shockingly, she is unwilling to listen to the judge's feedback and insists on defending herself. She tries to justify her design, but it does not go well. That I'm not out here like, I don't need bandanas because I don't want to be cool. Like, I know the people that I dress. What I'm doing is actually bringing people together. So I know my intentions. I know my heart. I know who I am. Guys, if you don't know, red bandana is for the bloods. They're gangsters, if you didn't know. And as a result of her impotence, she leaves the judges dumbfounded and ultimately gets sent home. This is another recurring theme throughout the show. Shockingly, many of the designers are unwilling to listen to criticism and learn from their mistakes. Oh, to be a young artist. Instead of admitting their wrongdoings, they are quick to assume a defensive position. The hubris of their egos is often their downfall. But guys, don't forget, streetwear is not about offending people. You offend people. And that's not what streetwear is about. That is not cool. Streetwear is not supposed to be rebellious or boundary pushing or a form of protest. Do not even dare to offend me. 
Thankfully, Caroline does admit her faults in the end, but it was too little too late. In the next episode, the challenge is to dress the ultimate it couple. The contestants are tasked with telling a story of feeling young and in love, and with the major twist being that this is a team challenge. Since Justin won the previous challenge, he is tasked with picking the teams. As there is an uneven number of contestants, he chooses to be in a thruple with Kai and Blue, leaving Camilla and Wooly together and Alan and Paige. Another twist is that at least half of their look has to come from upcycled materials. With the challenge beginning, the designers get to work crafting some genius ideas. Do like an underground military, like gay couple, that's a story. You know what I mean? It is also told that Blue doesn't know how to sew, but he has a genius idea. Kiss marks on the clothes to reference Aww. the man. Also, we get some info on Alan, and he explained that he has a full team and his clothes are in four different retailers. Obviously, that is not anything insane, but I feel like there are a lot of hardworking designers who aren't on that level yet who could benefit from being on this show a little bit more. Also, just going to show again the different levels that the contestants are on. Time goes on, the models arrive, and Camilla gets really upset at Wool A for taking over too much, but it is quickly resolved and they get back on track. And like I was saying, Alan, who has a full team and his clothes in multiple retailers, can't even sew. I'm be honest, like, we can't use this? Look, it's like puckering. But what do I know? Moving on to the photo shoots, the contestants put their visions to the test, with Alan and Paige making an IG dream couple matching outfits, Wole and Kamala making Joe Biden's army, and the thruple making a love triangle scene. When it comes time to judge the thruple, Blue gets pretty defensive, again, the hubris of the young designer. Keep this in mind for future reference. There's a lot going on in their looks, with the judges thinking that their individual strengths do not mesh well together. With the judges now tasked with making a decision, Alan and Paige are called up to meet their fate. Then, Justin is called up and answers that he thinks Blue should go home. Blue is called up and, much like Caroline, he doesn't really listen to the judges' advice. They want him to step up his game, to do more than just draw. He gets defensive again. Loud aesthetics. This sounds like another excuse though, no, I'm not, honestly. I'm not but I'm it does. I mean Surely he will change his ways and do better in the future. Regardless, it is announced that Wole and Camilla won, and that Alan will be going home. Which makes sense considering he was on the chopping block every episode so far. Episode 4 commences with a huge, shocking, awesome Soyjack reveal. Today, the contestants will be designing for DC Comics and the Suicide Squad. How awesome is that? Surely this episode isn't going to be a 45 minute long advertisement paid promo. Oh no. What I want to know is, where is the Joker? So basically, the contestants all pick a character that they want to base an outfit off of, and now they have one day to create it instead of two days like all the other challenges. Alexander John shows up too, who is a sneaker collaborator and customizer, so stay tuned to see the fire that he cooks up. The DC Comics chief creative officer calls in to give the contestants all some wisdom as well. However, drama arises when Wool A steals all the leather, forcing Kai to rethink his plan. I'm not gonna cut out pieces for you when I only have one day to do this. I don't know how many times I'm gonna fuck up or how much fabric I need. People be fucking taking shit that they don't even need. And again, Camilla asking for advice on how to sew things. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Just going to show that everyone is on different levels. It's kind of like, should they be judged on this? Is it fair to those who actually know what they are doing? But anyway, with not much time left remaining in the challenge, the shoes are revealed. And not trying to be mean, but you can definitely tell that these were made in less than a day. It's funny too, seeing Camilla ask for respect, yet she was constantly asking for help throughout this whole episode. I feel like people underestimated me, but now I feel like I'm finally gaining some respect on my name. Mm -hmm. So you're still on this side. So how do I sew these pants together? Mm -hmm. The outside, right? No, that's the crotch. But now, time for the big reveal. This is awesome, guys. I love the super deep and insightful quotes that Justin puts on everything. He really has a lot to say. Few will understand this. I also like Paige putting her logo on everything in five different spots. The judges end up talking to Wole, worried that his stuff is too safe and too familiar, and delivered similar criticisms to Kai as well, saying that he didn't quite meet expectations. But one of their critiques is that he had to explain how his outfit related to his character. But should that really be his fault? If they don't know the character, should he have to explain how his outfit relates? Sounds like the judges are undereducated on their DC cinematic universe lore. Moving on, the big winner for today is Kamala, which is definitely fair to everyone else. And unfortunately for Wole, he is getting sent home. Episode 6 is definitely the most 2021 of the show, with the theme being streetwear as a means of expression and bringing awareness to social and political issues. But guys, remember, don't offend anyone, because that is not what streetwear is about. 
And Bobby Hundreds is on as a special guest this week. How boss. Fast fashion is also a critical issue of the week, which is very topical. The brand director of Supreme also shows up and it is revealed that Kai already knows him. I feel like there are too many people with connections in this show. I wish they would have put on for the unknown grinders more. I was prepared to make fun of Justin putting another I'm 14 and this is deep quote on his piece, but then he went on talking about how his dad committed suicide, so I'll give him a pass. A lot of the contestants go into their personal lives and struggles in this episode, which is nice to see a more human side of things. But then, almost halfway through the episode, they announce the results of the George Floyd trial, which adds to the heightened emotions in this episode. Camilla's outfit is revealed, and her skills really shine through. It definitely doesn't look like she just drew all over something. The rest of the contestants reveal their outfits to the judges, and Offset delivers some pretty great critiques as usual. I like that. That's fire. And the drip is so yeah, good. It's fire. It's but yeah, this episode is very 2021. I feel like Blues looks ironic. I cannot take Camilla seriously, and Justin... I'll just give him a pass. But the judges give their critiques, and since it was such a heavy episode, they decide not to send anyone home. Of course, that's kind of understandable. I imagine it would look pretty bad if they were like, yeah, Justin, I know your dad and uncle killed themselves and your aunt is schizophrenic, but honestly, your hoodie is mid, so we're sending you home. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, in episode six, the contestants will be designing a fit for Offset himself. So the pressure is on. More specifically, they have to create a hoodie or sweater that is supposed to be a collab with Offset, so definitely a big opportunity. Cardi B also leaves him a video message just to reiterate the significance of this challenge. Offset is a very picky guy. He goes around and the contestants ask him some pretty hard-hitting questions for inspiration. Do you like anime? Yes. Offset, being a very particular guy, is throwing everyone off. Telling the contestants to use different fabrics, what he likes and doesn't like, he's giving them a reality check. Justin, again, making another patchwork hoodie with a quote on it, and Blue, again, not sewing anything, just drawing the same thing, refusing to listen to Offset's advice. It is time for them to show off their work, and to make matters worse, Cardi B has shown up to help out the judges. I really like Camilla's anime-inspired design. I have never seen this before, and Offset is not rocking with Blue. <laughs> Damn, he didn't listen. Come here! Uh-oh. <laughs> Bruh. They should have listened. Offset is pretty critical of Kai as well, saying that he was doing too much. And as a result, there are no winners, meaning anyone could go home. As such, Blue and his inability to listen to advice turned out to be his fatal flaw, resulting in him being sent home. Even after the judges were trying to explain to him why, he refused to accept that he is in the wrong. Offset specifically said he would not wear it, yet Blue is insistent on the fact that this is actually something Offset would wear. Obviously, I heavily disagree. The challenge was a look on Offset, and I feel like even though you didn't like the hoodie, the overall look definitely looked like something you would wear, but wow. but wow. I I appreciate Blue, it. But I just gotta on. be honest. Like that look was for you, but you didn't like the hoodie, so wow. I gotta be real. That's just my point of view. Again, showing the defensiveness and egotistical nature that often proves to be the hubris of young designers. Sure, stick up for yourself, but having the capacity for change is important, especially when three people, all of which who have been in the industry for longer than you, are trying to give you some actually helpful advice. Refusing to hear them out is just kind of rude, even if you don't agree with. With them at least show a little bit of respect, but I imagine in the heat of the moment it was all pretty overwhelming. He didn't fold under the pressure, he stood on business. But they dropped some knowledge that it's not about him, he was too wrapped up in being the artist as opposed to designing for the artist. And now we are on to the final four. For the challenge this week, the contestants have to create a design inspired by a strong woman in their lives. The contestants give some insight into who they will be basing their work off of, and the girl judges come in to check on how everything is going. Definitely another emotional roller coaster of an episode. And who could have guessed, Camilla is still asking for advice. Okay, this is how I, I do the, the crotch, right? You sew each leg separately first. No, I already did. Yeah, and now you close each of them separately. Hmm. With an hour and a half left, the models arrive and the contestants finish up their designs, getting ready for the photo shoot. Starting with Justin's look, Offset has some words of wisdom. Patchwork's fire. And Kai, who admitted that this was his first time designing women's wear, did a pretty good job and impressed the judges. Kamala, however, again, went with a very repetitive design similar to things she's already made. In pages, although there is a lot going on, the judges were more or less into it, and after the shoot, the judges call up Justin and Kamala to critique their work further, claiming that Justin's was kind of pedestrian and that, again, Camilla's is very samey. And judgment time. Kai is the winner for this episode, and props to him for taking a risk and doing something that he has never done before. And unfortunately, the hardworking innovator that is Camilla gets sent home. 
thus deciding the final three. Now, for the final episode, things get crazy. They get intense. The contestants look through each of their collections so far and are told that they will now be presenting their lookbooks to the judges and only two of them will be selected to move on to the actual finale. This is everything that they have been working towards. The cohesiveness and the vision of their collections will be a big deciding factor, and to help them out, Bobby Hundreds has returned to give them some free game. The contestants go over their themes, with Justin's being internal struggle and survival, Paige's being black excellence, and Kai's being war and preparation, a sort of biker gang theme, individualistic but community. Now it is time to present them to the judges. The contestants pitch their work and explain why they should win. The judges, after reflecting on what streetwear really means, have come to a decision. The decision that Justin and Kai will be moving forward, and unfortunately for Paige, she will be going home. But she gets offered a collab with Marnie, which she took pretty well and was understanding, definitely more so than Blue. Now, the final two have to create two new looks that they will have creative freedom over and present their previous seven looks that they have created. They will be debuting everything on the runway. They have one day and 13 hours to get to work, but the surprises do not stop there, with Little Jupiter and the head of the Instagram sneakers and collabs coming up to drop some game. This is huge. Also, the global creative director of Foot Locker Women shows up, and Kai has already met her as well. This guy is too tapped in. And they are not done yet. They have saved the best for last. Dapper Dan shows up and gives them even more wisdom. He is certainly rocking with Justin. Anyway, with 15 hours left, the models arrive and Kai and Justin start trying to arrange everything. It is definitely a lot of work for just one person, creating two outfits in less than two days, all while arranging and preparing everything for the runway, for which it is the first time for both of them. Usually, there are pretty big teams that handle this sort of stuff, so good on them for sticking it out and not succumbing to the pressure. Definitely, it would be overwhelming. With everything ready, we finally get to see the grand finale. Kai is up first, and although the judges don't really like his new looks, they enjoy his completed collection, and Justin, learning from what he has been told, actually took off some of the cringe patches and made some changes to his looks. I think quotes and writing in small doses are pretty fine, but sometimes it can be far too blatant and doesn't really leave much up to the imagination. Very pseudo deep. Now, the judges have to make the hardest decision yet. Ultimately, because he listened to the judges and really stepped up his game, the judges decided to go with. Justin. Yeah. 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 Greatest of all time. Definitely a huge moment for him, and very unfortunate for Kai. So, Justin wins $150,000, the ultimate cosign from the judges, and will have his most recent look sold on StockX. I definitely feel bad for Kai just having to listen to all of this knowing he just lost, especially when Justin tries to console him at the end. But he does already have a lot of industry connects, he did win a few challenges, and the show did help get his name out there more, so I guess it's not a total loss. You live and you learn. But you may be wondering, now that it has been a few years, where are they now? Justin is seemingly still doing his thing, creating a lot of hand-sewn one-of-one looks and hosting the occasional pop-up. He has his own online store and the prices of the pieces are certainly interesting. I'll reserve my judgement as it's not really my thing, but I can respect that he is more of a quality over quantity type guy. Kai, on the other hand, has really leaned into the whole biker aesthetic combined with his Vietnamese heritage and continued his work. He's still active in dropping clothes to this day, which is good to see. Same goes with, I believe, most, if not all, of the other contestants. I imagine that this show was a good learning experience and allowed them to participate in things, like a runway show, that they may have not been able to do otherwise. Although I have my gripes, I do think that the show is pretty good for what it is. It may be a little too on the nose sometimes, some of the craftsmanship was not the greatest, but what do you expect? There is a second season of the hype which I've not watched yet, but maybe I will in my free time, or maybe not. I think the show did a good job at giving mainstream audiences a window into the world of streetwear, and maybe even inspired some younger, future creatives. I can appreciate that they took the time to explain concepts like a portfolio or upcycling, and show different designers at different levels all learning from their mistakes. I think if you take the show for what it is, aren't expecting it to be anything more than a streetwear competition show, then it's honestly not that bad. It's pretty entertaining, and it teaches us to be understanding, to not let our arrogance be our downfall, and to avoid being defensive in times when criticism is necessary to our growth. Much to think about. I'm really surprised that the show did not get that much attention, especially considering the amount of celebrity appearances, but all the reviews are very mid. 
but I do not think the show is mid. Too ahead of its time, perhaps. Maybe people will look back at this era of streetwear fondly in like 10 years from now, but time will tell. Anyway, if you have seen the show, let me know your thoughts. But with that being said, thank you for watching and later, Ragers. Oh my God, Offset is about to show his ass. Then I lost my great uncle when I was seven and my aunt struggles with like being bipolar and schizophrenic. Man, it's fine. You, man.